Hey, what's up? My name is Dan Go, and I have been the gym owner for about 18 years. In about 2018, we sold that gym, and for the past four years, I have been helping entrepreneurs get their bodies in shape with ease and minimal stress. We helped clients lose over 100,000 pounds from their bodies, and in today's video, I wanna show you the four secrets to losing weight and keeping it off. And I want to make that distinction. It's not about losing weight. It's actually about losing it and keep it off for the rest of your life. So you never have to worry about this problem ever again. And I'm going to show you the four ways in which we do that. So if you want to fast forward into what these four steps are, number one, it's going to be knowing your numbers. Number two, it's going to be knowing the right diet that you're going to be using to burn fat. Number three is going to be building muscle, using your workouts, and the very fourth one is going to be learning how to sustain your results when you get them in the first place. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this video. It helps the algorithm and it helps me reach more beautiful people like yourself. So if you're ready for that, let's get into the video. Now, when you look at these particular secrets, I want you to look at them as foundations. So they're pillars in which you are building the house of your body and I want to make the distinction as well as that it's not about losing weight it's about keeping it off it's not about making money it's about keeping money and that's a distinction that not a lot of people have when it comes to their bodies so the stat is about 75 to 90 percent of people who lose weight end up putting it back on and the reason why they do this is because they use unsustainable methods in order to transform their bodies in the first place. They're way too focused on the outcomes, not really focused on the process or creating a lifestyle for themselves. So as you watch these pillars and learn these pillars, I want you to ask yourself, what can I add as a part of my lifestyle? You're always gonna have a way in which to keep yourself honest, knowing your numbers. You always need to find a way in which to eat food to help you lose the weight and keep it off. And uh, you always have to find a way to build muscle because that's the compound interest of your body. So the first part is going to be knowing your numbers. So I was talking to an entrepreneur and I asked him, when do you track your sales or how often do you track your sales? And he told me that he tracks it every single day. He tracks his income every single day. And then I asked him, okay, so how often do you track your weight? And sheepishly, he had this like look on his face was like, I haven't done that in like months. I'm scared to see what the number is. And this is an example of understanding what your numbers are. You will not make any improvements if you don't know your numbers. On a basic level, you got to know what you are weighing on a regular basis. Uh, you have to know uh, your inches, your measurements, uh, especially around your waistline. You want to actually take pictures as well. So pictures are going to give you a visual representation of how your body looks and the changes that you're making. On a deeper level, you want to get your blood work done. Probably get it done every six months to eight months. You want to be able to get a DEXA scan. That's gonna show you the most accurate representation of your body fat, and it's also going to be able to measure visceral fat as well. So how do you take your numbers? Number one is you have to have a frequent way of tracking your weight. I would say once every three days, once every two days, some people do it every day, whatever you feel is right for you. The other one would be your inches. You would probably do your inches once every week. I track my waistline once a week on Fridays. The other one is going to be your pictures. You probably want to do your pictures once every month. And this is during the process of getting your body in shape and losing the weight. Now again, you want to track your numbers because what you measure is what you manage. And if you're not tracking your numbers, all you're doing is just guessing. You need a representation of where you are headed in terms of your progress. And the numbers will tell you that. So the next part is using your diet to burn fat. So it was April and I was watching so many people, when the weather was getting warmer, I was watching so many people jump out into the streets and start to use cardio in order to burn some fat. And one of the things that they have to realize is that your workouts and exercise don't really burn as much fat as you think. It is going to be your diet that is going to be the main determiner of how much weight you lose. It is a lot easier to not eat 100 calories than it is to burn off 100 calories. And one of the things about cardio as well is the fact that when people do cardio, long duration cardio, where they're running for 30 minutes or doing a 5K or doing a 10K, it ends up increasing their appetite. So this is why we want to use the diet to focus on 
when it comes to burning fat. And when it comes to diet, we're thinking about a couple of things. Number one is going to be the quality of foods that go into your body. You want to have whole, single ingredient, nutrient dense foods put into your body on a regular basis. You wanna get most of your calories from these foods. The other number that we focus on is going to be calories. How many calories is it going to take for you to lose the amount of weight in a specific period of time? And again, I wanna talk about sustainability. I don't wanna lose 20 pounds in six weeks. I wanna make sure that we're losing weight at a nominal rate to make sure that we keep it off for the rest of our lives. The other number is going to be macronutrients. You want to understand how many macronutrients or what amount of macronutrients go into your body. The main one that I'm so focused on is going to be protein. I say that you want to get at least 0.8 grams to about one gram of protein per pound of body weight and uh, per pound of lean mass actually. And what you want to do is you have to understand that protein is the building blocks of muscle and you want to keep your muscle as much as possible while you are losing weight. We're going to get into that in the, the next pillar when we talk about it. The last part is going to be timing. And when it comes to timing, we have a very specific timing that we use with our clients and it goes like this. So we start with the last meal of the day. We stop eating food about three to five hours before we go to sleep. And we do this because we want to enhance our sleep. We want to actually have deeper sleep. And this allows us to have better appetite, more energy the next day. It's kind of the lead domino. And the next part is going to be eating our second meal about three to five hours before that. And then we want to set our last meal to be about three to five hours before the second meal. And then this creates this constant schedule of eating that trains your hunger to go off at the right times. It also gives you constant energy throughout the day. And one of the things that you may be asking is like, Dan, what about fasting? You know, what about not eating the second meal? What if I want to skip that? So what we found with a lot of our clients is that when they do that, it actually increases their appetite at the end of the day, especially when it comes to fasting. I'm going to do an entire video on this. Uh, fasting is not necessarily good or positive for people who live high stress lifestyles like the people that I work with. And if you live a high stress lifestyle, I wouldn't necessarily say fasting is going to be the solution for you because it can also increase appetite. Like we said before, it can also increase anxiety. It can make you just be ravenous. And, uh, and again, also with fasting, you want to be able to take your body out of catabolism first thing in the morning with a high protein meal, because that's going to help you build muscle. So scheduling your foods, is what I call circadian fasting, which is a fasting according to your circadian rhythms. And it works so well for our clients because what they say to us is that number one, they don't feel hunger throughout the day, even though they're eating less calories. The other thing that they say to us is that they have more energy throughout the day, but that is also because they are eating better quality foods, but also because they're doing the right timing for their meals. And to me, this is like one of the easiest ways to put your hunger on a schedule because hunger is going to be one of those things that you deal with when you are trying to to lose weight and if you can mitigate that if you can eliminate that then it's going to make the aspect of dieting so much easier for you now the third pillar is going to be building muscle using your workouts and the best way to do this is by lifting weights or doing calisthenics inside the gym whichever one you choose but applying the principle of progressive overload to your workouts and when i say progressive overload all i mean is is that you're doing a little bit more and pushing your body a little bit harder so it can adapt so you can increase the amount of muscle that you have. You can increase the amount of strength that you have. So progressive overload looks like a couple, actually there's 12 ways to do it. I'll give you two very easy ways. One is going to be increasing strength inside of your workouts. The other one is going to be increasing volume. And I'll give you a third one. Uh, the other one is going to be increasing range of motion while you are doing the exercise that you're doing. That's why we always say that you should be using good form when doing these exercises. Now, what you want to do with the workout itself is pick about, I'd say anywhere between five to eight exercises where you're going to get stronger in them. You want to be able to use progressive overload to track your workouts and to see that you are either doing more volume or you're doing more in terms of weight. And as I said in the beginning of this video, muscle is the compound interest of your metabolism. The more muscle that you have on your body, the more that you are building metabolically active tissue and you wanna keep as much muscle, if not build muscle while you're losing weight, because it is going to make sure that you keep your metabolism high and that you're burning more calorie or as much calories, if not more, when you're losing weight. I've seen instances in beginners where you can lose about 20 to 30 pounds of fat and also increase lean mass by about six or seven pounds. 
I've, uh, especially in beginners, it is very easy. I don't say easy, but if you do things the right way, you can increase muscle while you are burning fat. As you get a little bit more intermediate, as you get a little bit more experience inside of the gym, it's not necessarily something that you want to aim for. You want to aim for specialization. Now, you may be wondering what exercises to do inside the gym. I'm a very basic guy, especially when it comes to the foundations. And I look at these exercises as movements rather than exercises that you have to do. And I'm not necessarily a guy who will go on Instagram and find the next coolest workout and the next weird thing that people are doing. I'm really focused in honing in the foundations and the basics before going off and doing some cool shit. So the exercises I'm talking about are the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, an overhead press, a back row, uh, a vertical pulling motion like a pull up, and the single leg version like a lunge or a reverse lunge or a hinging pattern like a deadlift or Romanian deadlift. These are not necessarily, again, exercises that you should do. These are movement patterns that you should aim for to get stronger for choosing whichever exercises that work for you. Now, the last part is going to be sustaining your results. Now, when it comes to sustaining your results, there are about five to six pillars that you should be really focused on. Uh, when you lose weight and even as you lose the weight. So the first one is you got to restrain the brain. You have to have some form of cognitive restraint, whether that be uh, tracking your meals, whether that be just making sure that you are just uh, eating a certain number of meals throughout the day, not snacking. But there has to be some form of cognitive restraint because uh, we have so much abundant available amounts of food around us that we need to practice some form of restricting ourselves from eating whatever is around us. We also have to keep ourselves honest. We have to know our numbers. Like we said in the very first pillar, we have to track a number that matters to us. And for me, the easiest number for me is weight. It's always gonna be weight. It's always gonna be stepping on the scale, even during the times I don't wanna step on the scale because that number keeps me honest. That number keeps me in line with uh, the weight of which I want to be weighing on a regular basis. The other one is going to be making it sustainable, like having some form of flexibility inside of your diet. This is the reason why I love tracking foods because it gives me the cost of foods. It makes me understand what I'm putting to my body, the macronutrient profiles, the micronutrient profiles. So one of the things about flexibility is in healthy eating in general, it's not necessarily an outcome. It's more so a ratio. Uh, you want to think about it as like 80, 20, 90, 10, 70, 30, 70% 70 or let's just say 80% of your calories are going to come from whole single ingredient nutrient dense sources and about 20% of your calories are going to come from process sources or fun sources, so to speak. We can call them flexible sources. I hate the word cheat, by the way. I think the word cheat foods is horrible. You're not cheating on your diet. You don't have a relationship with it. But anyways, that's another video for another time. You want to have some form of flexibility. You want to make the diet enjoyable for yourself. And we're taking the long view on this. We're taking the long road. We're not necessarily trying to lose a bunch of weight within a weekly time period. We're thinking years. We're not thinking weeks. We're not thinking months. The other part is you have to understand your body's defense mechanisms. When you lose a bunch of weight, what happens is, is that your body has defense mechanisms to put the weight back on. You have ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. Uh, your body actually starts to get a little bit hungrier depending on how much weight you lose. And that causes people to eat at times when they don't really feel like eating. You also have leptin, which is your appetite hormone. And then this causes people to eat a meal and not feel full from that meal. And we see that about when people lose about 10% of their body weight, they end up running into these defense mechanisms. So you want to mitigate that by not necessarily putting yourself on a deficit for too long. You want to make sure that you give yourself regular breaks in between losing about 10% of your body weight, taking a break, 10% of your body weight, taking a break. And the break is going to be as long as you took to be in that deficit in the first place. And then this mitigates these bodies, your body's defense mechanisms from rearing their ugly heads against you. The other aspect of sustainability is just daily activity, getting regular walks, exercising. The people who keep the weight off are the ones who are exercising on a regular basis. They are the ones who are working out in the gym. They are the ones who have fitness and exercise as a priority because it helps them keep the weight off, not necessarily from a caloric perspective, but it keeps it off in the sense that they want to live up to the effort that they put inside the gym. So they keep their bodies healthy by eating healthy and making sure that they're making use of the workout that they have. And the final part of sustainability is just like, you have to change your identity. You can't be the same person uh, that you were when you uh, were at the 
you know, higher weight, so to speak. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to go from being a person who says, oh, I, I gotta work out to being the person that says like, I need to work out because this is for my sanity and this is for my peace of mind. You have to identify with the things that you are doing. And this is a big reason why I say, as you're going through say like a weight loss journey, you want to keep a journal. You want to keep a journal of all the experiences that you have. You want to keep a journal of all the benefits that you're getting because this locks in all of these things into your identity and it gives you more more reasons to follow through on these healthy habits. All right, so to summarize about everything that we talked about, number one is that you have to know your numbers. Number two is that you have to burn fat using a diet that works for you. Number three is going to be building muscle inside of the gym. And number four is going to be focusing on sustainability after you have lost all of the weight. And essentially this is a system. And one thing I like to say about systems is that you know when discipline fails system scale and you want to focus on your body as almost like a machine and systems is what helps you automate the process for getting yourself in shape and all you need is probably one system you're probably one system away from getting your body in shape in the first place so you have about four pillars that you uh, can work on right now uh, in the coming weeks I'll, co I'll go through each and every one of these in detail but right now you have the pillars that will create a, not only, that will not only help you lose weight, but will also help you sustain the weight off. And if you made it this far, then please like and subscribe to the video. And then if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm very new in this game, so I'll answer any question that you guys have. And uh, yes, thank you very much for watching the video. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.